You don't have to wait 10 years to become certified as an engineer. I'll give you five quick tips on how you can get your government certificate of competency before the age of 25. So if you're a mechanical or electrical engineer looking to get certified as a competent engineer, um, it can be daunting because previously it used to be, you know, you had to have had 10 years experience um, or you wouldn't actually go forward and, and registering until you, you felt that you had sufficient experience. Um, and it can be daunting. It's very difficult. But I got my GCC when I was 26. Um, and I'll share with you guys some quick tips on how you can get your GCC. I get a lot of questions on LinkedIn um, and I get a lot of DMs on how um, to go about getting a GCC. One of the first things is that chemical and industrial engineers cannot get certified for a government certificate of competency. If you are looking to get certified, you need to be clear on the reason why you're wanting to do it. A lot of people want to do it for compensation, bigger salaries and bigger opportunities, and that's fine. But just realize the level of um, responsibility that does come with being appointed GMR 2.1. Okay, so first thing is you must be qualified um, and pass your mechanical or electrical engineering BSc, BEng, or BTEC. Usually this is a four to five year degree, which you get with your honors. Um, and obviously there, there are accredited universities in South Africa um, where you do get the qualification, right? So I think that's first things first. Um, so get your qualification, get your degree. Once you have that and you get your first job and already in your mind, you know that you want to pursue the certification after a couple of years, you need to be clear with your line manager on what types of tasks and roles you'd like to be exposed to. It's very easy as a new graduate, a young engineer, to get thrown into various areas of, whether it's in the supply chain, uh, FMCG, in mines, in other corporates and other organizations, whether it be Caterpillar, Danal, Sasol, um, whatnot, whatever it may be. Just be clear on what your end goal is and ensure that your IDP or individual development plan is aligned to where you're looking to go. What's important is your first two years, at least, you get exposed, especially for factories, you get exposed to your utilities, your maintenance, um, and have a proper, clear training program for you as an engineer. So get hands in, learn how your equipment and, and machinery works, understand how the plant is laid out, understand your safety, health and environmental policies, procedures and the system that you've got in place, whether you've got 9,001, 14,000 and the management systems that actually govern how your factory operates, know how your maintenance systems work, spend as much time as possible in the workshops, especially with site services, where you've got your big utilities, your boilers, your compressors, your HVAC systems. Make sure you ask all the questions relating to power factor correction and really immerse yourself and expose yourself. If you're a young engineer and you're sitting behind a desk, it's the wrong thing. So get as dirty as possible in your first couple of years and make sure you document everything because after your two years, it will come in handy. So once you've completed your two-year um, practical experience, you're eligible to apply with the Department of Labor to gain entry into the exams. So first thing, have your degree. Second thing is get your two years minimum experience in the factory, especially with your utilities. Because the third thing is when you apply, you will be required to submit evidence that you've been exposed to predominantly engineering and maintenance type work. You'll need a letter of sobriety from your employer, especially your engineering manager, that says you're well behaved, you're always sober at work, you're always present, um, you understand the basic safeties around the organization, um, because ultimately, the biggest thing that comes with, with being an engineer is the level of responsibility that you have for everybody's life, basically. Um, so once you submit these in, the fourth thing is the Department of Labor will respond um, with approval. 
So if they decline, they'll give you the reasons why. Um, and you may need to wait before you apply again. But if you're successful and they do respond with um, positive news, they'll send you a letter and give you three years to actually obtain your GCC. What that means is you'll be given an opportunity to write the exams in year one, year two, and year three. The exams are usually scheduled in June of every year and in November of every year. And each year you can write both exams. So there are two exams to pass. The one is the OSH Act, so Occupational Health and Safety Act. It's very theoretical, but it is based entirely on the OSH Act. The second one is a little bit tougher to pass, so it's very wide scope and is practical. They can ask you anything from thermodynamics, from HV systems, um, they can ask you from boilers to um, motors, to turbines, to compressors. They can ask you about SANS codes. So the second one is practical. What some people try and do is that in their first year, they try and write both exams. Whether it's in June, they try and write both, or they write the theory first in the first exam on the first sitting in June, and then write the practical in November. Usually the pass rate isn't so good when, um, when you try to do that because you must give yourself some time to, number one, understand the theory, go and your plan to refer back to something that you see day to day so that when they ask you in the exam, it's easy to remember. Um, but yeah, you do have the opportunity to have a sitting. You're right. If you do not pass, you can go back in November and sit for the same exam again, but you've only got three years to do so. Then the fourth thing, um, I mean, the fifth thing to remember, because that was the fourth, fifth thing to remember is that once you've passed both your exams, you need to then go back to the Department of Labor with your transcripts and ensure that the um, CETA or the organization in which you are writing the exams with, they send your transcripts and your results to the Department of Labor so that they can issue you with your certificate from the chief inspector that then says that you are certified as an engineer in South Africa. Okay, so those are the top five key tips in registering and passing um, as a certified engineer, especially for mechanical and electrical engineers. I will post further videos on how step-by-step -step, to study through the OSH Act so you can guarantee success in passing. Also on some key tips, especially when you're studying for your practical, um, on some of the type of questions that they ask, some problems that um, you may have initially been exposed to in first year, but when you see it in the factory, um, tend to struggle to make the connection between the practical and the theory. Um, so I'll share a couple of more videos. So do subscribe, like my videos, and share with all your friends as well. Um, and stay tuned for some more tips on how to succeed. Cheers.